Hey guys, what's up? It's Pixelated Apollo. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you guys are doing well, and I welcome you back to World War One. This is the Great War mod for Napoleon Total War, and uh, this is a subscribers battle replay. It's a one vs one pitch battle. Now, this battle is not specifically historical, but it does have some historical backstory. It's got uh, some historical truths to it, if you know what I mean. Uh, so this was during uh, the early on in the war. So 19. 14 as you can tell war has not uh, started in these lands because well it doesn't look like the moon's surface actually looks fairly nice but that's going to change here today so historically germany uh, during 1914, summer of 1914, which is the name of this map, it's called summer 1914. Anyways, Germany wanted to surprise Paris, not like with the birthday party, but surprise attack by going through neutral territory. So they spoke to Belgium and they're like, hey, can we uh, march a couple thousand troops through your nation and surprise the French? And Belgium was like, make my day, punk. No, but seriously, Belgium was like, no. And by the 4th of August, Germany declared war on Belgium. And I think Belgium, some people say that Belgium had about one-tenth the size of the German army. Held them back for nearly a month. And that bought time for the French and British forces to prepare their defenses and prepare counterattacks. Uh, so pretty cool stuff right there. So that's kind of what we're watching. The German invasion, the German occupation of Belgium, which was known as the Rape of Belgium. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. All right, so let's look at these army comps, and then we'll get this one going. It is, well, it is it has started, but we're in slow motion. By the way, guys, these army comps are not historical. You can see there's some African troops on the battlefield. Pretty sure uh, no colonial African troops saw combat in Europe. Uh, I could be mistaken, but... But yeah, it's a, it's a troop called the Schutztruppe. Yeah, I, I, I don't speak German, so in case you didn't know. Uh, so he's got a couple units of them on the flanks. Uh, of course, in the center line, he is bringing his rifle infantry. Uh, in the back, he has uh, some guard infantry. These guys are pretty good. And then back here, he's bringing some rifle grenadiers. This is going to be a great close and personal type of unit. He's got another one back here. Uh, in the front center, he's got a Mark II female tank. And over on this side, he's bringing some Imperial Marines. So this is like a lighter infantry. Not as heavy as the rifles, but their range is a little bit better, I assume. And I assume their accuracy has to be a little bit better as well. Uh, over on this side, he has more Imperial Marines. And he's got a couple Hussars in the back for Cav. Just so cool seeing those German World War I uniforms on horse. I don't know. It just looks, uh, looks elegant. And the back here, he's got some Jaegers on the battlefield, or Jaeger. And then here is his general, and uh, of course, he's got the artillery. He's bringing one unit of the heavy howitzers, so this is going to tear up that Belgium defense. Let's now move on to Belgium. So what has he got here? He's got some snipers who are pushing forward in the center lines. Very bold, very, very brave. And then for his, uh, his main defense, he's bringing carabiners. Uh, so pretty much a rifle infantry. He's got a machine gun bunker. Uh, not exactly well placed. There's a lot of trees in the way, which might affect the the, uh, the machine gun, but I don't know 100% sure. It might just go through the trees. And then he also has a tank defending the side. He's got a Mark II uh, mail tank. Another reason why this battle, uh, the unit-wise, is not historical because of the type of unit. I don't, I don't believe tanks weren't, uh, they weren't used until later on in the war. He's got more carabiners, but this is the old style. Look at these fresh, all-black uniforms. That is sexy. And then over on this side, he's got three units of rifle infantry. Back here, he's got the Chasseur a Cheval, uh, which is, uh, well, it's pretty much a cav unit. And then, well, duh. And then here's his general again. Look at those uniforms. Ah, oh, general looking in style. And then he does have some field guns, which are not as good as the heavy howitzers. Uh, but at least he has some artillery. So let's go ahead and uh, do normal speed and start this battle. All right, so the Belgian snipers, they're pushing forward. Now, they don't exactly have the perfect angle to the German infantry. As you can tell, as they push forward, there's a slight slope, and that makes it very difficult for the snipers to use their long range because most of their shots are going to be going in the dirt. So let's see, yeah. Yeah, this is... 
This is a no-go. Yeah, yeah, they're not getting any kills there. Uh, they just have to wait for the Germans to get a little bit closer. Honestly, with these snipers, I think what he should do is just come back to the very top of this hill and just fire down. That way, he'd get a much better angle. And now the Germans are getting bombarded by the field artillery, which could be a lot worse. You know, it could be heavy howitzer, which the poor Belgians, they're, they're having to, to deal with. You can see the giant craters. Look at that. Oh my god, the carabiners. Look how lucky they have been the past couple volleys. Every single, again, every single shot has missed. A couple of, let's see, did they actually, someone die here? Okay, there's a, well, no, they're getting back up. So it's just a little shockwave there. Uh, so, no, they did lose two men, but still, look, that is just dumb luck right there. That's hilarious. Uh, but over here, the, the, other, uh, the other unit's not so lucky, getting some pretty direct hits on the, uh, the regiments, on the units. Uh, the snipers have reappeared as they continue to... F oh, no, now they're falling back. Now they're getting a little too close to those German lines. Oh, the German general is under attack, so the Belgians using their artillery on the German general, so he's gonna... Well, is he gonna stay out in the open? I don't know, was that an accident? Was there just a, a gust of wind that pushed that, you know, bombardment a little too far? No, well, the German general, he's gonna try to hide behind some buildings. The safety of the, uh, oh, no, yeah, there's more artillery fire. So they're definitely trying to snipe out the German general, uh, which is not a bad strategy because if you can take out their leader, you really destroy their morale. Uh, so now the bombardment continues on over on this side. Uh, Belgium, oh, God, Belgium getting ready, uh, prepping up their troops for the incoming German forces. Germany getting closer and closer. Now there's a couple stone walls here. You see this? I don't know if this actually gives him protection. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, it would be really cool to see some German troops in a bit of a gunfight. Oh my god, look at the wave of just Belgian troops just flying across the field. That is rough to see. Uh, oh, oh, the, the machine gun turret is now releasing hell upon the Germans. Let's see. Oh, they're getting some hit, guys. They're getting some hits. Um, so yeah, you can see the, oh wow. Okay, so the, the Imperial Marines, they need to make a decision. They can't just stand here. They've lost already 20 troops. Uh, and they're just, maybe just the German player doesn't realize he's in range of the, the turret. And now also, look at this. We got the tank. Is the tank firing? See, this is a male tank, so it's going to uh, fire some explosive shells. It's not going to be a machine gun turret. So it may... Oh, there we go. There we go. Yep, he's bombarding the position. So these Imperial Marines, I guess their orders are to stand their ground at all costs, even though they're getting peppered down by some uh, machine gun turret ammo, uh, suppressing fire. And now they're down to 176. Wow, they've lost almost 50 men just standing here. So the Germans, they must be so concentrated. Oh, yeah, here we go. We got a German, German advance. We got the colonial troops pushing on the flank. I think he's trying to outflank their uh, their defenses. Let's see. Belgium. Uh, Belgium. Uh, well, actually, he's got the troops, uh, the cav in reserve back here. They're also firing. So this is a uh, very fast-moving infantry pretty much a rifle infantry let's see if they actually charge in or move forward uh, but yeah it's all up to the chasseur to defend the flank for Belgium and Germany continues to push forward his oh yeah these colonial troops really absorbing most of that ammo uh, let's see what is the rest of the infantry doing he's got more colonial troops not quite in range he's got some rifle uh, forces kind of up on this slight slope trying to fire down trying to soften up their defenses Let's see what else is going on in the center. We got more rifles pushing forward. Lots of um, rifle fire rifle fire coming uh, from the Belgium side. Uh, that, that heavy howitzer, though, causing a lot of morale issues for the Belgians, who are down to 132, originally having 250. Oh, my God. This is certainly... Uh, I mean, do you remember how beautiful the, the green fields were of the Belgium lands, but now they're turning into the moon's surface. Oh, is that a charge? Do we have a charge here? A cab charge?
it is early on in the war. Uh, it's not surprising. We would see stuff like this. The Hussars going in for the kill. Most of them dead. Oh my god. All of them dead before they even reach the trenches of the Belgium army. And look at the, just the graveyard of dead Hussars. Dead German Hussars. That was crazy. That was an epic charge there. I really enjoyed that. And then we have the Chessers still again firing at the flank using their rifles. Even the, uh, the officer, he's got his pistol out. He's, he's putting down some suppressing fire, giving out the orders. Let's see what's going on over here. The Germans are actually making a pretty bold push. Uh, they got to be careful here. Uh, the tank, so really the best way to beat a tank, and this is not historical or anything like that, but game-wise mechanics, best way to defeat a, a uh, tank is to just charge it with infantry. Oh! And the tank's going to stand its ground. They might have to send up some infantry this way or some reserves or something. He's got his carabiners close by. Oh, oh, Germans are running. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is not a surprise here. This unit has uh, suffered a lot of casualties, uh, so they are now breaking. Same thing over here. He's got his other colonial troops really suffering. Uh, he needs to, I mean, it was smart of him to use them on the flank. But there's just too much uh, too much support here. This cav support has been a, an excellent tool. He could even charge these guys in. Let's see. No. Oh, oh, he might. No, no, he's just going to reload. And the Germans are, are getting closer and closer. I would say the Belgium defense is probably weakest right here because of the constant bombardment. And the unit that was fighting right here actually broke. Uh, but this unit here, this rifle infantry, they should be promoted for slaughtering those hussars that were charging forward. They stood like an like a like a stone wall and defeated that charge. That was that was probably my favorite favorite part of the battle so far. Uh, there we go. The Germans break in again. So uh, not looking great for this German assault on the on the uh, the right side of this uh, Belgium defense, or really it's the left side from their point of view. Uh, we do have the tank. Again, focusing down on the center. Uh, this is a female tank, which is... I, I prefer the female tanks over the male tanks because they're just so good at slaughtering infantry. There it goes. There it goes. Look at that. Look at that. Let's let's look at what it's doing right here. Uh, yeah, it's going after the carabiners, the old, the old carabiners. So since this is 1914, you would see these guys more often than the, uh, the other carabiners. Oh, God, that machine gun fire. You can even see the crew down here. There they are. There's the machine gun. <laughs> Looks a little goofy, but it works. Uh, yeah, they're focusing down their machine gun ammo on uh, the, the female tank. They're gonna try to penetrate that armor. We've got some Jaegers back here with the long range, tr you know, trying to chip away the Belgium defense. Let's see what's going. Oh, on the flank, I, it, it appears that they destroyed this tank, but it was. At a cost. Look at all of the fallen German soldiers trying to take out that tank. And now the Belgium uh, forces are coming out of the trees. We got grenadiers coming out of nowhere in the very beautiful uniform. That all black uniform. And once again, German troops are fleeing for their lives. Uh, well, nope. They returned back to the battlefield. This could be huge. Imperial Marines coming back. Oh my god. So many casualties. Uh, so, so far, the German assault has not been so... Uh, well, successful. Uh, the, it's really up to the center position. It's up to this tank, which is still active. Uh, but if they can break through the center, then they could possibly win this battle. The balance of power slightly in favor of Belgium, or the Belgians. But uh, I don't know. It's it's gonna. They're gonna need a miracle. In fact, Belgium. The Belgians are so confident in this uh, this uh, battle so far that they're gonna push up the grenadiers move up their infantry and try to surround the Germans the Germans do have some fresh troops back here but not exactly fresh but you know they're confident I mean they are fresh but what I meant by fresh is in full you know healthy not depleted oh god the Cavs moving in Belgium Cav let's see if uh, they can actually well nope they're gonna okay they're not gonna go for an epic charge that's okay that's reasonable Reasonable. Okay, more Germans are running in the center because the the Belgian, uh, no, the assault infantry. Belgium's assault infantry coming in to clean up the mess. Now is their opportunity to take out this tank. Maybe get up here, throw some grenades in there. Oh, the tank's going to turn and fire its turret on the infantry. Will that be enough to break this uh, assault infantry? Oh, no. No, they're going to get to the tank. No, wait, they broke. The, bro the tank is still alive, guys. This tank has been... 
You know, whenever I have a tank on the battlefield, it dies within like three seconds because enemy artillery always destroys it. It's so awesome to see the, the uh, German tank kick ass right now because this is just, it's too much. And they need it right now. Unfortunately, the Germans, they could not handle that cav support. They're breaking over on the flank. But look at the balance of power. It's actually shifted somewhat towards the Germans again because I think a lot of their troops here are returning to the battlefield. And it's really just grenadiers fighting Imperial Marines. That is a mis mismatch uh, because obviously the Grenadiers are better at uh, close combat and uh, not not good at fighting in the open fields against a, an infantry that's known for fighting in the open fields uh, or better, more, more equipped for fighting in long distance open field battle combat, whatever. Um, you know what I mean. The Imperial Marines are doing better. It's, it, long story short. short. Okay. So now it seems like the Germans are on the defense. Uh, oh, the tank was destroyed. Oh, no. Yeah, it was captured. You see that? Uh, the, uh, it says captured there. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how. I don't see any uh, Belgium troops here. But, yeah, that's it for the German tank. Now the Germans, they have to fall back and put up their defenses. Again, the balance of power is dead even, guys. Oh, the cav has been slaughtered. I don't know if the Belgians were paying attention, but now it's a graveyard of Chasseur because the German forces, we got guard infantry. Oh, they still, wonderful. They still have the guard infantry, which is one of the best units in this army right now. Another bombardment coming down, field artillery, trying to soften up these rifle grenadiers. Rifle grenadiers now moving forward. We got a cat, random, it's just this poor soul. Oh, that's the officer. Look, it's the Belgium officer. I think, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, he's, he's, He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. The Germans, uh, there's still hope, guys. The Germans are going to push heavily on this left flank, uh, the Belgium right flank, from their point of view. Uh, but if they can break through and then meet up with the forces in the center, the center forces, ooh, what are they doing? They're getting awfully close. They're getting a little too aggressive for my liking. Oh, they're throwing in their grenades. Look at this. Look at that. That is so cool. So, yeah, they're throwing in the gra grenades, trying to destroy the morale. Uh, so that's why you got to bring the grenadiers. Uh, they, they, it doesn't really do a lot to the uh, the enemy forces, but it looks really cool. So you got to give them that. Now the guard infantry is fighting grenadiers in close combat. Guard infantry should hold their own. There you go. There you go. Oh my God! The explosions, guys! The explosions! The Jaegers pushing up. Jaegers, oh, we got some Belgium, Belgian troops who are out of position. This is not, yeah, form a line. You're getting outflanked, fired from the flank. We got a charge here from trench gunners. Oh, they broke the Germans. Oh, God. I did not notice this. The Germans have some stormtroopers with SMGs. That's not fair. Watch this, guys. All right, so the SMG's going in. Again, this is uh, more of a later period type of gun you would see in World War One. You wouldn't see it at the beginning of the war. At least I don't think so. And now they're moving up closer. Oh, there it is. You hear that? Yeah, there goes the SMGs. Okay, well, you know what? Now that I know that the Germans have SMGs, this one's over. <laughs> Unless the rifles can move forward and kill these guys quick enough. You see the carabiners. They're, they're closing in. They're, they are firing on the flank of those SMGs. They've got to to win this fight. Uh, unfortunately, well, this is actually pretty close. we got carabiners holding back three depleted units of Imperial Marines. Trying to protect their artillery in their center lines. So the Germans doing everything they can here. Carabiners are falling back. Going back to the tree line. It, 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 well... It kind of looks like they're going through the tree line. Uh, but I think they're going to get a little bit closer to the artillery. Our artillery now changing locations. Focusing down the German flank. The, or their right flank. Because they're worried about the German advance. Uh, Belgium now constantly pushing back the uh, the German forces. So uh, the center of position is looking better and better for the Belgians. Uh, but Germany... Let's see, what do they got back here? They, is they st of course, still have their howitzer. They have their general, which they could use to charge in. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. The Germans, they've got their SMGs. I don't know if they're hidden right now. Yeah, they are hidden. So, uh, they're not quite sure where they're located. 
I don't know. I, it's still it's still saying that it's dead even. I think it's mostly because of the uh, the howitzer. The howitzer is very powerful, and the game is taking that in in, uh, in consideration. Uh, let's see what uh, Germany does here. This is very very awesome battle. Uh, you know, honestly, when this first started, I was like, oh, okay, well the Germans are gonna lose right away because the Belgians are just butchering them. But that's not the case. Germany turned this one around. But will it be enough to win the overall battle? So here's the thing, like the Belgians, they can fall back and hold these trenches, but that's gonna make them just sitting ducks to that heavy howitzer, that German heavy howitzer. And then of course they've got the, the German troops pushing on the flank. Good positioning here of the carabiners who are gonna be in the tree line. Now trying to uh, soften up the flanking Germans. And if the Germans can take out the artillery, it's it's game over for the Belgians. Let's see. Oh, oh, the Germans are breaking. They formed up a little bit on this hill. They're going to fire down, but they better get firing or they're going to break too soon. Yeah, one of the units already breaking down to two units of Imperial Marines. Let's see if they fire in time. Okay, this one's now firing. Very good. It takes them a little while to form up. You know, they just got that Napoleonic style warfare going through their veins. <laughs> yeah, Belgium desperately hanging on to their artillery. They realize that it's vitally important to their existence. More rifle infantry headed over to this flank. Can the Germans hang on for dear life? I don't know. The German morale, you can see it. It's turning to orange. They're down to 69 men, giggity. And also this one is down to 65 Let's see what's going on in the center though. Oh, we actually have a close combat here. The SMG is going in. Oh, who's gonna win? Let's see, who's he fighting? The Grenadiers. Belgium's Grenadiers. And it's actually quite close. In fact, the, uh, the Grenadiers are losing based on morale. It's actually, no, it's going back and forth. The SMGs now losing their morale. They've gotta use their guns here. Don't go into close combat with SMGs. Oh my god, this is this is a very important melee. Because if he can quickly beat the Grenadiers, he can send up reinforcements. Oh my god, it's so back and forth, I can't take it. Let's see. No, yet, the German, the Stormtroopers. The Grenadiers are down to three men. And the Stormtroopers are down to 32. How is this so close? There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be it. There we go. The Grenadiers are dead. Now the SMGs are pushing forward. There's one unit of rifle infantry, but if the SMGs can th get there quick and own oh, the machine gun nest. Oh, no. You, I forgot about the machine gun nest. They're trying to outflank it. Fire, guys. If you want to win this, you got to fire. No, that machine gun turrets. Yep, that broke them. That broke them. The Germans are breaking here as well. And now all they have to do is take out the artillery for Germany. But Germany, well, they've got their guard infantry. Why is their guard... Did these guys break early on and they stopped breaking? Uh, there's actually the battles in favor of the Germans. And I assume because of the uh, heavy howitzer. Now let's not forget that this is a German invasion. So the Germans technically have to attack... But I think for, you know, game's sake, I think the Belgians or the Belgium is going to attack the German position and take out that artillery. I mean, you might as well because uh, it's going to constantly just bombard on your forces. Uh, so let's actually, let's fast forward here a little bit. So we're going to see what happens. Okay, so they are going to push towards the center. Uh, hopefully they spread out their men a little bit more than that. Uh, this could break their force. I don't know if they have enough, guys. I don't think this is going to be enough because... Their artillery is outclassed, and they're going to have to take on a fairly healthy guard infantry unit, which has 111 men left, and they have a general's bodyguard, which uh, you never underestimate the general. He could charge in and just break a couple units randomly. So there they go. They're, they're, ah, yep. Dead, Another, oh, yep, there goes the general. All right, let's do normal speed. Let's see what happens. All right, the general moving in. Some shots coming down. General's like, dang it. We're going to win this battle, even if it means I'm charging in. Oh, will he break them? Let's see. The morale is hanging on by a thread. 
That's actually pretty gutsy to charge in his general like this. Now they're... Oh. The artillery firing down as well. Just trying to slow down their flank. And then here comes uh, the Belgium infantry who are now trying to advance upon the, the artillery. Uh, they can see the guard infantry so they know what they're going to be up against. What I would try to do if I was playing as Belgium, I would send one small unit around the flank to let the rest fight in the front. We'll see what he does there. The general is uh, now running. He's not dead. Yep, there he is. There he is. He's like, screw this. I'm out of here. <laughs> Better luck next year. All right, so now the balance of power once again slightly in favor of the Germans. Which is amazing because they lost just lost their general. I don't know how long this guard infantry is going to hold. We'll find out. Oh, they're getting awfully close. All right, come on. They're not quite in range, but this is going to be it. This is, gonna, this is going to determine the battle. This fight right here. Oh, the guard infantry is not firing back. Are they not in range? They're taking on rifle infantry. They should be. Does the German player not realize he's fighting here? His troops are dropping. He had about 111. Now he's down to 92. They're dropping really fast. Wow. Wow. The artillery still focusing down. Uh, the small units over on this side. Come on. Germany. You can win this fight. If you just... There he goes. The officer's still alive. So that's a thing. Finally. Finally they're going to fire back. Please? Maybe? Oh, they're just oh, they're just posing. Just like poo poo poo. We don't actually have bullets, so we're just gonna we're just gonna look threatening. What are they doing? It's like Germany's handing the player is just like handing them the victory. Artillery just smacks their forces though. Are they out of ammo? Is that it? That's gotta be it. I mean that I can that's the only thing I can think of. They're just using them as a meat shield to buy time for the artillery. Oh, they're going in for a charge. So these two, all these units have to be out of ammo. Watch the Germans start firing. I swear to God. I'll be so mad at Germany right now because he can win this battle. Maybe he's just pretending he doesn't have any ammo. Oh, here we go. This is going to decide the battle right here. If the Germans can hold, they have a shot. They have a shot. What? <laughs> What did he step away to go to the bathroom? All right, so didn't think this battle would come down to this. The guard infantry, oh, getting some kills. Meanwhile, this is going on, or, or meanwhile, we've got a charge here. Yeah, they're now firing down on the artillery's position. He's got his assault infantry as well. And don't, let's not forget, they have snipers on the battlefield as well, which is going to make it pretty challenging for that artillery. The guard infantry is still green. Their morale is green. They're breaking the Belgians. Wow. I mean, that's not surprising because I think the numbers were actually pretty even. And I think the Belgians were pretty tired at this point, having to march so far. And they, they did chart. I'm just surprised. Oh, look at this guy go. Oh, look at these. Look at these two. Look at these two. So Hollywood. Let's see who wins this duel. Uh, back there, the artillery is getting destroyed. The German artillery is getting destroyed. I think. I Oh, oh that's it. That's how this duel is going to end. All right. Uh, so, yeah. Yep. That's it for the artillery. So, the artillery crew now actually going into melee. To try to break these trench gunners. I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe. But not likely. Okay, some more reserves coming up. Okay, so what's happening here, guys? What's going on with the guard infantry? Why aren't they swarming around these two uh, carabiners? There's one left. Why aren't they breaking? This battle has a bizarre ending. All right, so that's it for their infantry on that side. Germany is victorious there, but they lost their artillery, so that pretty much wraps it up uh, because without the artillery, this one unit of guard infantry is not going to win this one. So we're actually going to fast forward, and sure enough, they break instantly, and that's going to wrap it up. So Jokadel, man, what's, 
What's going on, man? Did you not see the infantry over here, or did it desync? Uh, regardless, this was a really good ending. Uh, you can see that the Germans deployed more because they were attacking. And then we have Knight of the Veil, vale, who is commanding Belgium. He's get, uh, He got 3,000 kills. It was actually, I mean, if you look at the kills and the number of troops, it's a really close fight. Germany could have won that one if he was just paying attention to this unit. Uh, but, uh, yeah, here's the stats. Uh, oh, 600. Hold on, what is this? The heavy howitzer, no surprise there. How much? I wonder how many uh, kills the tank got. Uh, 149, which is not bad considering the tank is super cheap in this game. It's like dirt cheap. Uh, so there you have it, guys. That's going to wrap it up for today's battle. I really, really enjoyed this one. Thank you, Joe Goodell, for getting this replay because it's a very unique mod, and that's something I don't get a lot from subscribers. Uh, so I'm always looking for unique battles, and that's a good way to get your uh, battle replay on my channel. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.